Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. I am Monet and you are watching Life is Monet. Originally, this video was going to be me telling you guys about my anticipated releases for the remainder of the year of 2020. But when I was making the list of all the books that I was excited about, September was just action packed with so many releases that I realized that I'm going to be broke. And also this video was going to be long, so I had to just split it up. This video is going to be all of the books that are coming out in the month of September that I need to get my hands on ASAP, like expeditiously, and just pray for my wallet because I'm unemployed, yet I have books that need to be bought. So... First up, this release comes out on September 1st. It's going to be one of the first ones that I'm going to be grabbing, and that is going to be Blood and Honey, which is the second book to The Serpent and the Dove. I'm pretty sure The Serpent and the Dove came out late last year, late 2019, but I could possibly be wrong. But I know that a lot of people hated this book. But I read it and I can see how people were annoyed with it, but it was also still enjoyable for me. It was what you would call good trash because I genuinely enjoyed it, even though there were some problems with the story itself. I overlooked that because I just liked reading it. Now, I am someone who is not a fan of haters to lovers trope. I just feel like it's never really executed right. The hate is just never really true. It's just because they probably don't know each other or they bumped into each other one day and they were just having a bad morning. Like I feel like the haters to lovers trope is just always very faux, like fake to me. And the hate only lasts for a little bit. So when I read Serpent and Dove, baby Reed hated Lou until the end, okay? Reed even let her die. Reed genuinely hated her. And I was willing to overlook so many things that happened in this book just because the haters to lovers trope was just real haters to lovers. I mean, I feel like on one end, um, one character started caring about the other one a little bit more, but it was still one-sided because they didn't actually get into a relationship until during near the very end of that book. And it's a pretty long book and I just really enjoy finally an author who knows what a haters to lovers trope is. Another book that I read this year that kind of got that trope okay was uh, Song of Wraith and Ruin, which was actually really good, except they weren't haters to lovers they were more like nemesis enemies like they were they had these goals that they were both trying to accomplish and in order to succeed at these goals the other person needed to die but i they didn't know each other to hate each other so i wouldn't call that a haters to lovers but reed and lou hatred pure pure hatred and i was here for it after we see the crew off at the end of Serpent and Dove, I'm guessing that Blood and Honey is gonna pick up from them on the run. They're basically like fugitives at this point. And I actually did like the character Coco. And I know that she's gonna be more prominent in this book and we're gonna get to know a lot more about her. And I'm honestly just interested in it for that. I mean, I liked the book because it was haters to lovers kind of done right. But I honestly don't know why I'm continuing with the series because now they're together. And I don't know what to expect in this book. I could easily very well be disappointed in this book. But then again, I don't know where else the, the plot can go. So she may just shock me because like I said, I have very low expectations, but I do want to read it just because I'm already invested in the series and they're going to get my money. So next up is going to be a release set for September 8th and that is going to be The Bone Shard Daughter. Now this book is supposed to be centered around a badass female character and we're always here for that. We're following a character named Lin who is the Emperor's daughter and the Emperor doesn't want to claim Lin as the heir to his throne but he is losing his power throughout this kingdom and the dynasty is basically falling apart. Lin is willing to do whatever she can despite her father not wanting to acknowledge her as the true heir to the throne to make sure that there still even is a throne and that includes her dabbling into the forbidden bone shard magic in this book. So we have a female taking down the patriarch, taking on the patriarch and then there's some magic involved in it and if I get witch feels from it that's even better and I cannot wait to get my hands on this book because the trope just sounds really really good and the cover. I actually really, really like the cover of this book. 
So next up, we have a release that's set for September 15th. I actually have quite a few books that's set for September 15th. So just bear with me because it's gonna be one day of just massive money spending in the book market. First up, we have Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. In this book, we are following a character named Enchanted who is aspiring to be a singer. Enchanted's biggest dreams and aspirations come true after she auditions for Corey Fields, who's supposed to be this big R&B artist in this world. And he pretty much takes her under his wing and he's making all of her dreams of being a R&B singer come true. Now, Corey is supposed to have a very dangerous, dark side to him that actually comes across as abuse to Enchanted. And suddenly he comes up dead and she wakes up randomly and she has his blood on her hands. And everybody wants to know if she killed Corey Fields and Technically, she wants to know if she killed Corey Fields too because she's not even sure what happened that night. Now, I have never read a book by Tiffany D. Jackson, but she wrote Monday's Not Coming and Allegedly, and I have heard nothing but phenomenal things about both of those books to the point where I have now purchased them. And I was planning to do a vlog of me reading books by Tiffany D. Jackson, who is a black thriller author, and she's a female at that. Those are all the things that just make me throw money from my wallet. And when I heard that she was coming out with a new book, I'm like, oh my God, that is so perfect because I can literally do a vlog of me reading Monday's Not Coming, Allegedly, and Grown. I will be reading two backlist books and a new release by this author. I just wanna give her as much support as I can because not only is she a person of color, she's a black woman and so am I. And any amount of support that I can throw behind her, I plan to. So I'm actually really excited for this book to come out. I can't wait to vlog me reading those books because I actually don't read a lot of thrillers. I recently read one thriller and now I'm like in a thriller hangover so I'm itching to read these three thriller books by her and just get into her writing and see what everybody's so excited about. Next up is also a September 15th release and that is going to be Legendborn. This cover of this book with this black girl on it is just everything I didn't know I needed and as soon as I saw this cover I didn't even need to know what the book was about because I was going to be reading anything with black girl magic that's another way I'm going to be throwing my money at you. You guys are soon going to see why I'm going to be so broke in the month of September because all of these books and the covers are just chef's kiss. In Legendborn, we're following a girl named Brie. Her mother has recently passed. She's not connected to her family, so she goes off to this Chapel Hill school. At this school, she is the witness of a demon attacking and beating on a human. And there's this secret society at the school called the Legendborn. And it's their job to basically hunt down these creatures. Now, she runs into a character that tries to wipe her memory of what she saw so that she doesn't remember this demon feeding on this person but her memory actually doesn't get wiped and it unlocks a special power within her that she didn't know she had then she goes down on this journey and she finds out that there's so much more to her mother's death than what the police officers are telling her and she's going to get to the bottom of it even if she has to infiltrate the legend born society herself and that's black girl magic literally so i'm going to be reading it because we support and we're rooting for everybody black next up we have another september 15th release and that is going to be to sleep in a sea of stars now a couple videos ago i did go on this mini tiny very small rant about ugly sci-fi book covers so when i seen this book cover and saw that it was sci-fi I was automatically sold. Finally, we have a science fiction space opera book cover that is more than just a planet or the sky. And now I'm like, yes, these people know what a cover is supposed to look like. And then I seen a picture of the physical hard cover of this book and it's 900 pages. That's, you didn't have to sweet talk me. I was gonna buy the book anyway. But when I seen that it had an 890 page count, it was like, are you, are you flirting with me? Because I think that you like me and I like you too. And I, I want to take you home. And I definitely plan to, this book is one that I will admit that I plan on pre-ordering because this book is everything that I ever needed in a science fiction book. We love to see it. I done ranted about why I wanted to buy this book so much. I done forgot to tell y'all what the book is even about. Does it matter? I mean, you probably already added it to your Goodreads as soon as you've seen the cover, right? But anyways, for those of you in the back, 
we'll go through the synopsis just so you can know. We're following a girl named Kira who is on this unauthorized and untouched planet and she touches this relic that kind of gets the planet moving around her and now she's launched into like this space war and she's trying to maneuver first contact with different species and aliens and she's being tested on the brinks of her humanity. Meanwhile, back at the ranch on Earth, the humans there are on the brink of annihilation. So it's just a lot going on in this book and that's probably why it's gonna be 900 pages. To be honest with you, I don't care because I stated before, I'm going to be reading it regardless, sis. But you do you and I'ma do me. So the next book I have is going to be releasing on, no surprise, September 15th. It is just a day of book releases. I am excited to read Pyronessi and I'm gonna tell you why. I have had my eye on the first book series that this author wrote, which is Jonathan Strange and Mr. Morrell. And I just keep going back and forth because I don't know if I'm going to like the book. And it is 1100 pages. And eventually I feel like I'm going to break down and buy it because if I keep eyeing a book, then maybe I really want to read it. There are two books that were written uh, 100 years ago that I want to read. And that is going to be The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett, which I believe is 1200 pages. And then this 1100 page book is another one that I want to read. So as I was researching, Searching and stalking this book from afar, I realized that this author has another book coming out for September 15th. So I'm like, let me just go read the trope because maybe I will be more excited to read her new release than I will to read her backlist. I'm just gonna read you guys a snippet of this synopsis because if you know me and you know all the reasons why I love the Starless Sea, this book was just icing on the cake and it just sounded like it was going to give me everything I needed after reading the Starless Sea. Pyronessi's house is no ordinary building. Its rooms are infinite. Its corridors are endless. Its walls are lined with thousands upon thousands of statues, each one different from all the others. Within the labyrinth of halls, an ocean is imprisoned. Waves thunder up staircases. Rooms are flooded in an instant. But Pyronessi is not afraid. He understands the tides as he understands the pattern of the labyrinth himself. He lives to explore this house. The Starless Sea is literally not even a sea. It's just an endless maze of stories woven together that overlap at different points in time. And this book just sounded like everything that I need. And also within this house, there's a, a man called The Other that interacts with Pyronessi. Pyronessi and The Other are supposed to be doing this research project together, which explores some dark aspects to Pyronessi's house and it uncovers a whole new world that he didn't even know existed. So Jonathan Strange was released in 2004 and I know that she has continued with the series on. There's about four or five books in that series and they're all pretty long. But Pyronessi is a completely different book from her original series, so I cannot wait to get into that one because the synopsis just sounds really, really good. And this book is only 272 pages and not over a thousand. So I'm gonna start off with a 272 page book because I can read that in a day. That's slight work for your girl. And if I don't hate her writing by the end of the book, because you know I'm a stickler for writing, we can't move past bad writing. We can move past bad plots, characters, and world building, but we can never move past bad writing. We can't. So I will be reading this book and seeing if her writing is tolerable to me. And if it is, I will be going back to read that very big series. Moving forward towards the end of the month, on September 29th, we have A Deadly Education. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm reading this book because it's supposed to be a dark academia. And I'm trying to get more into that trope because I know that it's something that everybody's saying that they like. And I haven't read that many Dark Academias for me to say that I like that trope. I know that Ninth House is considered a Dark Academia and that book was a five out of five for me, but I don't know if I loved it because it was a Dark Academia. I've even heard someone call the Poppy War Dark Academia and I didn't love the Poppy War. So I feel like I'm on the fence, like 50-50. I don't know. So in A Deadly Education, we're following a character named Elle who goes to this school for magic. Now this school is literally deadly because you only get to leave if you graduate or if you die. So in this school, letter grades aren't what's important. It's literally just your ability to survive. There's no friends, no vacations, no weekends, and no teachers. All these kids are just here studying whatever they can and just trying to stay afloat and literally breathing. 
In this school, on top of having to deal with all of that, there are also dark creatures that lurk in the halls throughout this school. Now, Elle possesses this big, powerful, dark magic that apparently can level any monster that she faces, but then vice versa, she could end up wiping out the entire school. So this book follows Elle as she's trying to balance that out. And like I said, I don't know how much I love a dark academia, but if you're watching this and you know that that's your thing and you feel like I'm talking to you, sis, I am, you should pick up a daily education that's going to be out September 29th. We're almost done guys, I swear we are. The next book that I have is also going to be released on September 29th and that is going to be Sky Hunter by Marie Lu. This is a new book series by this author and I've read a couple of her books earlier this year and I actually really do enjoy her writing. I recently bought Kingdom of Back. Um, Kingdom of Back actually just came out this year in March. So I was actually very pleasantly surprised to find out that she's going to be releasing another book in September and it's going to be the start of a new series. I already have one book that I want to read by her so I'm like okay why not just pair those two together the same way that I'm going to be doing Tiffany D. Jackson I really do when I find an author that I'm interested in I really like to compare their works especially if I love one book or one series by them I'm more inclined to go and read other books just to see if maybe they have another series that I'm going to love even more so I'm looking forward to this release and also the cover was just captivating to me so in Sky Hunter, we are following this character named Talon and she is a striker. In this world where she lives, there's this federation that's going from country to country, taking over their entire way of living and basically overthrowing their government, establishing the federation in the new place of leadership. Everything is basically fallen except the country of Mara. Talon and her mother are actually not originally from Mara. The country that they were from actually failed, so they had to find asylum and refuge in Mara themselves just like other people and other people Mara are not so accepting of her and her kind she goes to the bottom of the barrel and she's constantly mistreated in this world she stands up and fights and she wants to push back against the Federation so she joins the group of strikers who all pledge to basically stop Mara from falling to the Federation because it's the last thing independent from the Federation the Federation actually turns people into these war beasts that they call ghosts and they're constantly sending them into the country of Mara to help them bring it down. The last book that I have is also going to be released on September 29th and that is going to be Dear Justice. If you have heard of or read the book Dear Martin, this is the companion novel that follows the character named Quan, who we got to see a bit of when we read Dear Martin. Quan has found himself in a similar situation that is taking away his bright future at an Ivy League college and he's now landed in jail. And so we're gonna follow this character the same way that we did the person in Dear Martin. And I'm really looking forward to just seeing how this book ties in with the other one. I want to keep up with this series just because I haven't been able to keep up with Angie Thomas as much. I haven't read all of the books for The Hate You Give um, on the come up. And I know she has another one called Concrete Rose Out. I am not fully caught up to date on that series, but I did enjoy reading Dear Martin and I do want to be caught up in this world. And so I'm very excited to be reading this companion novel because I'm like finally a series that I can keep up with um, until I can actually catch up on Angie Thomas and her series. So yeah, those are all the reasons that your girl is going to be broke the entire month of September. If you've seen any books on here that you've been eyeing or possibly are now eyeing because I've talked about them let me know in the comments below which books you're gonna be buying and there are a lot of books coming out in the month of September that I have not listened in this video because they're not my anticipations but if you have an anticipation for September that wasn't listed in this video let me know not sure I can buy it though because <laughs> I don't have any money. I'm going to be broke, but I would love to share in that excitement with you and to share in that joy with you. Thank you guys for stopping by my channel. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.